Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to tell you all about how to take care of Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata. I have pretty extensive knowledge, in my opinion, of how to take care of this plant as it's been one of the oldest plants in my collection. I have five different Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata plants slash just Hoya Carnosa Compacta. Really, this is a Hoya Carnosa Compacta video, but hopefully I'm here to help. If you just don't know what to do, maybe you just got this plant or you just got a propagation or maybe you've propagated a plant and you just don't know what to do. I'm here to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more fun planty content. First, let's talk about my history with Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata. I own five plants and the reason I like these plants so much in my collection is because they act more like a roommate than a child. By that, I mean that you don't need to take care of them a lot. You can kind of trust them to do their own thing. They're gonna pay their rent on time. They're gonna be nice to you. They're not gonna be mean to your friends. On January 31st, 2020, my friends sent me a cutting, well, more like an uprooted half of their Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata. I do still have these plants. I will be showing them to you later. This plant has stayed in my collection ever since then, and I have added multiple different plants of this to my collection. I said that weird, but you get it. On April 10th, 2020, I added the Hoya Carnosa Compacta Mauna Loa to my collection. I was absolutely thrilled to get this plant. I got them as cuttings. On May 2nd, 2020, I traded for two more Hoya Hoya Carnosa Compacta Mauna Loa. And then on June 27th, 2020, I got the Hoya Carnosa Compacta that I currently have in my hanging iPod that you guys have probably seen a lot. On February 25th, I got another Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata, which I ended up combining with a smaller one and the first one ever that I traded in this pot. And on September 11th, 2021, I got this Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata. So as you can see, I've had these plants for a long time. I've had a lot of time to take care of them. So let's say first things first, you just bought a Hoya Carnosa Compacta Variegata, Compacta or Mauna Loa, whatever. Like, what do you do? As with most plants, lighting is the most important aspect, at least in my opinion, because you wanna make sure that your plants don't rot. Hoya do this nasty thing where when they don't get enough light, they will kind of rot, similarly to a cactus. You want to make sure that you are giving them plenty of light and you are making sure that they're in an area that's going to just get like a ton. My Hoya Carnosa Compactas, I've always kept in direct south facing light. A lot of people may be like, oh, they want bright indirect light, but I personally like to sun stress my Hoyas. I don't think there's anything negative that that does, except for maybe make them bloom, which in my opinion is a positive thing. You wanna make sure your Hoya Carnosa Compacta are just getting an absolute ton of light. So make sure that you're prioritizing that first when picking a place for a plant. When you get it home, don't water it yet. I personally only water Hoya Carnosa Compacta when I see it visibly pruning, kind of like your hands would do if you were in a hot tub. You wanna look at the plant, and if you can see that there's no prune lines anywhere, then I would continue to wait to water your plant. I personally like to wait until the whole plant is pruning before I water it. If I find that there's one strand, like I do have a very weird situation right now where I have one strand that's pruning and it won't seem to kind of plump back up, I'm going to be unpotting that one. If you have like one kind of end of the vine that's pruning and the top part isn't, I would keep waiting just a little bit longer, maybe a week or two. Then I would water when the entire plant is pruning and I would water very, very deep. When you get this plant home from the store, unless you find that the soil is ridiculously dense, do not repot it. I feel like the number one mistake people make in general is repotting plants the second they get them home from the store is really bad. It's gonna stress your plants out even more. Again, you can totally do whatever you want. I'm not here to argue with you, but if you want your plants to keep growing and you don't wanna set them back, if you wanna bring a plant into your collection and just instantly watch it grow, don't repot your plants, especially Hoya Carnosa Compacta. These plants, really only grow when they are super duper root bound. I only repot them 
if I find that they're drying out a little too fast or maybe the soil has lost its nutrition and you're noticing like your leaves are yellowing for absolutely no reason. I would only really up pot this if I felt like the plant has stopped growing. In my opinion, that's the only time to repot. You'll classically see people with like these massive plants in these teeny tiny pots. And the reason they keep them in those tiny pots is because the plant is root bound. It already has enough roots to sustain the plant. And so it's going to grow a lot. Root bound plants love to grow. Plants that aren't root bound don't really like to grow because what are they gonna do? Plants have to focus growing their roots before they can focus growing on other stuff most of the time. If you wanna bring home a plant and instantly start watching it grow in your collection, especially this one, don't repot it yet. Once you get to the point where you can repot your plant, what kind of pot should you put it in? I put almost all of my Hoya in the ceramic pots that I like to see at the store. I do pot them directly into these things. However, the one you're looking at right now is actually in a terracotta pot, and that is because the soil mix I had to use is just a little heavier than normal. So I wanted to put it in a terracotta pot because terracotta does dry out faster than ceramic pottery. So this plant will definitely not be suffering from any root rot, at least while I have a say in it. Ceramic pottery will keep your plants more insulated, so if you feel like you have a mix that doesn't really retain water very well, a ceramic pot I think would be really good to make sure that your Hoya is getting enough water. I have also potted Hoya in glass jars before. They do really good. Um, I don't know why people have this like issue with potting things in transparent stuff. I've never had an issue with that stuff. The soil mix that I try to keep all my Hoya in if I have the money to buy new soil would be half potting soil and half orchid bark mix. I try to keep them in something more like aeroid, like something you'd put a philodendron in because again, they do need to make sure that they aren't totally just running out of water. You don't want to put them in straight up bark, but you do want to make sure that there is enough soil in there to maintain the moisture and enough bark to make sure that the water isn't sitting on the roof that it's draining all the way out and that your plant's only getting the water that it needs to. Now that you got your Hoya, it's set up and everything's all good, how do you get it to freaking flower? Everyone loves Hoya flowers. So how do you get yours to flower? Hoyas flower when they're stressed. I have multiple Hoyas that flower very, very often. My species affinity Bertonii, my Hoya carnosa compacta, and on top of that, my Hoya lacunosa. I keep in a direct light south facing window where they are getting a lot of heavy, heavy light. They also get very warm when it's warm outside and cold when it's cold outside. So they're experiencing big temperature differences as well as a lot of sun stressing. Putting this kind of stress on your plant as well as how little I like to water my plants in general, create an environment perfect for making your plants flower, which again, you're stressing your plant out so you could argue it's not the nicest thing to do, but if you wanna see flowers all the time, I highly recommend stressing your plant out as long as you're not killing it. <laughs> Boys flower when they're stressed, so stress that thing out. What are we looking at when it comes to humidity? I have this last on the list because Hoya carnosa compacta doesn't need a lot of humidity to grow. Most most tropical plants grow faster when humidity is higher in general, but this plant I found has been able to grow really, really well even in low humidity environments. I would prioritize this last out of everything else I have put on this list. If you have the opportunity, keeping it above 60 to 65% humidity in your house will be the best for your plants in general. However, this plant I probably wouldn't give over 80% humidity, so just keep that in mind. Now, let's say instead of of a plant, you've got a cutting. Took a cutting or you bought a cutting. Well, for starters, you need to be prepared for six to eight weeks of a rooting. This plant grows incredibly, incredibly slow. It's one of the slowest growing Hoyas that is kind of pop culture for the community at this time. The shortest I've ever gotten Hoya Carnosa compacted to root is about five and a half weeks. And that was in a terrarium with moss fertilizer. I use liquid art. Liquid art is how I do fertilize all of my Hoya Carnosa compacted Vergatas. If you want to check them out, they'll be linked at the top of the description and you can use code LANTME underscore 25 to get 25% off your entire order. There are lots of different ways you can root Hoya. A lot of people will do it in water. However, what I think I've seen work the best is either rooting them in pond or LECA. Moss works really well too. Pond and LECA are really, really, really great. I'm not sure why. Also, some people like to use lava rock. Pond and LECA are kind of like your go-to if you're wanting to root something like this. You are going to have to be ready for a 
very long time commitment, but once your plant starts to show roots, they will continue to grow and you can either put into soil or you can keep in Pon Orleca and decide to do the semi hydro route with Hoya, which is very popular right now. I personally have liked growing my Hoya in perlite and moss. So that is pretty much it. That is how I take care of my plant. There isn't that much to talk about. I don't have an hour long of tips for you because this plant really doesn't need that. It is so easy to take care of. It just lives its life. It does its own thing. You don't even have to worry about it. The number one thing I see people get frustrated with this plant for is what if it gets pests? What if it gets thrips? What if it gets mealies? How am I gonna get inside of all of these little things? Well, for one, you can't really. What I do see a lot of people do is take the plant and hold it upside down and kind of soak it for a day or something in they'll mix water with like some pesticide and maybe some like dawn soap and they will just like drench the top of the plant like this upside down in like a bucket and let it soak like that to try to kill everything other than that you can use a q-tip i have been lucky enough to not really have to deal with a lot of pests when it comes to this plant but if I ever did, I would definitely use that drenching method. There was a leaf I felt like I couldn't get into and I just didn't wanna, didn't wanna take the risk. I'd probably just take the leaf off. I personally like how these vines look even when there aren't that many leaves on it. Like I have a couple, I have a couple of vines here that are like sparse in some parts and I still think that they look really nice. Yeah, that's pretty much it you guys. Really just give them super bright light. Make sure you're not keeping them too wet. Only water them when they're pruning like crazy and then when you do water them deeply. And other than that, they'll be your best friend. They'll never miss paying rent. They'll never yell at you. They'll never be toxic or abusive. They're just gonna love you. Put out these beautiful little curly, curly vines. And again, if you keep it in the sun, uh, they'll get pink. One thing I do wanna note though, is that sometimes people think that the tricolor is different than the normal one. So this is literally just a Hoya Carnosa Compacta green and white that I've sun stressed. And that is where the pink comes from, is sun stressing. Uh, a lot of people won't buy normal Car Carnosa Compacta Vergata because it's not sun stressed. Uh, they're definitely the same plant just sun stress so. anyways thanks for watching this care video i don't make a lot of these because personally i feel like i'm still trying to learn how to be better at taking care of my plants but this is one plant that i really feel like i kind of have in the back i have five of them i've been growing them for two years i've never ever killed one which is kind of saying a lot because i kill a lot of plants i think i just do really well with plants that don't need a lot from me and i think that's why i like this plant so much plus it's so freaking pretty i Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you know a friend who's struggling with their Hoya Carnosa Compacta, Varagata, Mauna Loa, or whatever variety, go ahead and send them this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe yourself. Leave a comment, it really helps me out. And uh, if you're looking for more plant tips or maybe you're struggling, you're a new plant parent and you're struggling to make some friends in the community, go ahead and join my Discord channel. It's only $5 a month. It's incredibly, incredibly valuable. We have such an encyclopedia, such a collection of amazing plant parents. We have over 140 plant parents from literally all over the world and we are always hanging out in the Discord chats. Coming out with us, it's only $5 a month and on top of that you'll get to help support me do this full time. And maybe you want to check out the fertilizer that I use which is Liquid Earth. I've watered and fertilized my plants with Liquid Earth every single watering for the last two years, well I guess for the last year. It's been going really really well so check out Liquid Earth and uh, maybe the Discord memberships. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next houseplant section or in my plant room. Goodbye.